Well, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. It's great to see uh, employees, friends, members. Francis, thank you for being here. Um, you know, as I was reflecting on the fact that this is a 30-year milestone for me, I thought, you know, in all the 30 years as CEO, I've never been more excited about the talent and the direction and the strategy and the results that this cooperative is achieving. Uh, I tell the board regularly, thank you for allowing me to have on staff such bright and talented people to get things done at such a very high level and achieve literally national best performing results. You've heard some of those from Joy and Katie, so I'm not going to repeat those, but I do want to talk about two or three things in the, in the results for 2018. First was the member satisfaction ratings that we get, and we survey our members regularly. How are we doing across everything? If we cut a tree on your land, we want to know, did we cut the tree well and did we clean up our mess? If we do work at your home, did we leave it in better condition than we found it? Did we meet your expectations if you had an outage? And our employees, when we look at all things total together, scored an 87 on the American Consumer Satisfaction Index last year, which puts us in the top three utilities in America, top three in this country. And, yeah. I'm very, very proud of that, and I think it really speaks to the fact that our employees understand that we're here to serve our members and our customers. Our propane and fuel subsidiary last year averaged 9.9 .9 on a 10-point scale in customer satisfaction. So we have the same belief there that we're here to make life better for our members and our customers, and we're here to serve. When we hire employees, we're looking for people who have a servant's heart and care about other people and want to give, to share a sense of purpose, that we're here about something that's bigger than making a buck. We're here about something that's bigger than just running a company. We're here to serve our members, our neighbors, our friends, the people that we work with and go to school with, and no, friends and family. So I think that kind of a culture is, is very, very important, and that's why our employees deliver that kind of service day in and day out. Katie mentioned reliability, and Joy mentioned reliability, uh, something I'm very, very proud of. We have one of the, the best re uh, reliability factors in the country. Our co-op regularly performs at top quartile performance in keeping your lights on. And we've heard from our members, particularly our mountain members, it gets really cold and windy. It's dangerous if the power goes out. And so our guys work really, really hard and on average get out and restore an outage in 70 minutes. And you think about that. If you're in bed asleep at 2 in the morning, and these four of these guys up here are wanting to be linemen, so you need to hear this story. You're in bed asleep at 2 in the morning, and your phone goes off, and it's our dispatcher saying, we've got an outage. You got to get your boots and your britches on. You got to go get a truck and you got to go to the outage, find what's wrong and fix it. And our linemen are doing that on average in 70 minutes. That's pretty incredible. And it, yeah. it, it really speaks to their commitment. And we have almost 50 linemen working at Blue Ridge. And they, you know, if you ask them, why are you willing to go out in 20 degree or 20 below degree weather? wind, snow, all the kind of conditions we have. And they'll tell you it's the joy they feel when the lights come back on, because they know they just made the people in that house, that community, made their life better, because the power had been out. So very, very important. As I think about the future, and I think a lot about this now as I'm getting into my 60s and thinking about, okay, we're gonna be turning the cooperative over to the next generation in the next few years, and we wanna make sure we're bringing in the right kind of talent, but even more importantly, as we bring in the new talent, are we teaching them the right culture, the culture of caring, the culture of delivering service, the culture of having a heart for people and something that the members can feel there's something different about my cooperative. And so we want to teach that as we go into the future and put in place very challenging strategic initiatives. So as I look at what we're really doing, we're moving Blue Ridge more and more into working with our members and our customers to be your trusted energy advisor. Whatever you need energy for, for your home, your business, your church, your school, your fire department, whatever type of energy you need, we want you to think, well, I need to call my cooperative Blue Ridge Energy or their propane and fuel subsidiary and have them advise me on what we should do here. So we're quickly becoming that with our members. More and more people are 
reacting and relating to us in that manner as we offer more community solar we're building the fifth one right now as we offer renewable programs energy efficiency programs uh, teaching people how to manage their demand with beat the peak and other things that we're doing we've rolled out a credit union loan program for people to finance home improvements to make their homes more energy efficient and we're just kicking off a big initiative to encourage people to give a chance give a thought to an electric vehicle we just got a report that we have 245 EVs in our area now. So it's growing, and it's going to grow bigger. I just saw last night a picture of the new Tesla pickup, and it is a beauty. Let me tell you, that is a beautiful <laughs> truck, and it's going to sail because it looks ferocious. And uh, so we're, we're excited about that, and we're developing programs to encourage people to charge in their garages at home at night, and we're going to give you a lower rate to do that because you're charging off peak and you'll benefit you're going to be much cheaper than gasoline the cooperative will benefit we get increased sales and all members will benefit because it will have more revenue and we won't need to raise rates so it's really going to work well for us and we're very excited about that we're excited about our subsidiaries and their potential for growth they produced as katie said about 3.3 million for us as members last year We've got a goal for that to grow to $5 million by 2025. And uh, I know Glenda, and who's the COO for the Propane and Fuels, and Brad, who's CEO of Ridgelink, are very excited about the potential and adequately challenged to grow it that much in that uh, short of a period of time. Well, let me talk a little bit about rates. Wholesale power is the biggest item that is in our rates. It's about 60% of the cost of your bill. And we've had a really good run with our wholesale power cost so good this past year and the first five months of this year that we're going to send seven million dollars back to you in november and december this year as a bill credit so you're going to get a really nice reduction on your electric bill in november and december we've discussed this with the board and we know that that we need to do this because our power costs have actually been lower than we thought they're going to be why well duke is switching a great deal from coal to natural gas and natural gas prices are historically at the lowest level we've ever seen. And so that's been a real advantage to us, and uh, we're gonna pass on those savings to our members. We had thought that coal ash cleanup was going to cause a rate increase for us, but fortunately, the federal government and Congress decided to do a tax cut, and that tax cut offset the additional cost of coal ash, and it really had zero effect on our rates. <clears throat> we do have one little cloud out there. It's not a little cloud, it's a big cloud. Uh, concerning wholesale power costs, and that is the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality just told Duke that under their regulations, you've got to cap, not cap, but, but move the coal ash out of six more basins at a cost of $5 billion. And that won't be covered by a tax cut. And so we're worried about that. Duke is appealing, and it's probably going to be a year or two before we know, but we're hoping that they will prevail on appeal of that. Let me mention a couple of good-sized investments that the cooperative is making this year. Uh, one is the biggest investment in the cooperative's history up in Ash and Watauga County. We're extending the 230, 230,000 volt line from Ash County in West Jefferson all the way over 17 miles into Watauga County over in Rutherwood. And if you go out to Rutherwood in Watauga County on 421 heading towards Deep Gap and you come to the food line, Right across the road, you'll see us grading out the substation lot right now. That 230 substation will cost us $15 million when it's completed in 2023. To get those lines there, the 17 miles of 230 line is $25 million. And if you do your math, 17 miles over $25 million, it's well over a million dollars a mile to build transmission line. So that $40 million investment will be coming into play in terms of our cost structure over the next uh, really three or four years, and Katie will be doing a lot of work with us on that as we put it into our financial model. The other thing, if you look out the window, you'll see we're building a new corporate office. I'm proud to say that we will be moving in that in October. Uh, we're investing about $17.8 million in that office, and I'm proud to say that building will be paid for when we move in, and it will not impact members' rates. <clears throat> the employees are very excited about it. And it provides some things for us that we don't have in this building, uh, primarily is, is safe cover during storm events for our dispatch and, and phone center, contact center. 
We didn't have any place to put them when we had the tornado warning. So we had to leave them in harm's way because they had to stay at their post to answer member calls. And so we're taking care of that in this building and lots of other things. We're seeing a lot of economic development in our area. Alan Merck does a lot in that area with his team. And we're seeing some exciting potential announcements around the corner of industrial expansion, new jobs being created in our districts. Uh, we're seeing the beginning of some housing growth. We're seeing a little bit of meter growth, Katie. We've gone from a half a percent meter growth to 0.75 percent. So, <laughs> hey, we used to be two to three percent. So we're, we'll take a 0.75 after the Great Recession hammered us down. The other thing is we're, we're really in a deep study. Uh, Brad Shields and team and, and Alan's team are really studying the next generation of automated metering equipment called AMI, Automated Metering Infrastructure, and Meter Data Management. So all of this is going to enable us to do much, much more with our members. Uh, the meter technology has advanced substantially over the last 10 years since we installed the first system, and that'll be something we'll be uh, choosing where we're going to go, what vendor we're going to use, and start deploying that out in 2021. Well, let me just conclude uh, by saying a huge thank you to our employees, some of whom are here today, uh, and say I thank you for delivering the incredible results you continue to deliver year over year. You know, our culture here is based on strong values, honesty and integrity, hard work, a deep belief that providing great service to other people is our highest priority. We have a strong commitment to our communities, and we have a family-based work environment at Blue Ridge Energy that honors and appreciates people. We just received for the fourth time an award from North Carolina Business Magazine of being one of North Carolina's best places to work. It was based on an employee survey. All of our employees completed a survey to Business North Carolina Magazine, and we ranked in the top companies in North Carolina for places to work. I'm proud of that, and I think it's that kind of feeling that our employees are so proud to say to people in the, their families, the community, I work at Blue Ridge, because they always hear back, you have a good job, don't you? You work at a good place. And people are very, very proud to work here, and I think that's why they deliver the kind of service that they do and why they carry out the purpose of this cooperative to make life better for all of us. Thank you.